Folks, welcome into another edition of Hot Topics right here on PubSportsRadio.com, the NFL Draft, only days away. Jeff, we all see you know, the top five, the top three, the top quarterbacks going to be off the board. But where you build your football team, the meat and potatoes, Jeff, as we know, are in those hidden gems in the draft. Let's have some fun and talk over that today. Yeah, you know, it's always, Donnie, the right thing to do when you're looking at draft props, you're looking at drafting in general. We're all fans of teams. Where does a team go late in the draft? This is a very deep draft. Donnie, I said on um, I, I it might have been on a Periscope or something recently. I think this could be one of the most talented drafts from one to seven that I've seen. I mean, there is a deep dearth of talent in this draft. It's just a ton of it, a plethora of it, a, a gigantic amount of it. It's crazy. Yeah, you know what's going to be fun about this draft? Because you talk about the depth of the draft and how many good players there are. How many times, Jeff, does the common fan watch the draft? Once you get outside of what, maybe the second or third round, oh, who's this guy? Where's he come from? Ah, we'll see if he helps out. You're actually going to get household name player, first team all conference selections, Jeff, fifth, sixth, seventh round in this draft. Yeah, you really are. I mean, really, whatever position you're looking for, uh, you're going to be able to find it. Let's just say this, Donnie. If you can't improve your football team in this draft, I don't know what to tell you. Um, there's going to be a lot of GMs, and if they can improve in this draft, you got to wonder what they're up to. No, exactly right, because you're taking a look at teams like that are starting that rebuild now. What a way to rebuild, Jeff, by having multiple trip picks, especially in the first round, and even all throughout the draft to sort of control it. The Miami Dolphins, we're looking at them to take a step ahead, but we are talking about some mid-level players, because as we talk, you know, look, Jerry, Judy, CeeDee Lamb, we all know that, Jeff, but there's some really good players. You're talking about, like, the, the 10th or 12th best wide receiver, like the KJ Hamlers of the world, Colin Johnson out of Texas all the way down the board. I did a video yesterday on Devin DuVernay. There are so many good players, and even when you see, like, where they're sl- to go like wait a second this guy caught a hundred balls in college and he's only going to go in the fourth round a lot of gems here in the draft Jeff why don't we start to talk about some of those maybe starting with the offensive side of the football running backs wide receivers things like that yeah you know that's a good point by you I think the great thing about this draft as well is there's such a a, a, a great amount of different types of players. So like a receiver, there's so many water bug type of dynamic players that can move around and, you know, catch you know, options out of the backfield and things like that, you know, jet sweeps. And then you got the big kids that can go up and get the football, you know, a chase Claypool. He's a guy, Donnie, that I really like. I, I, I got to tell you, this is a kid that I think is different than what you've, you're going to see in the first round, but when it's all said and done, he could be one more, one of the more productive players in the in this class. I mean, you look at his size. I mean, he's a gigantic kid. Um, reminds me, Donnie, a lot of Andre Johnson from the Houston mm-hmm. Texans years ago. Just a big, bruising football player. Tough to bring down. He's rugged. Kind of a Mike Evans s type of player. Um, so he's a guy. I think in the second or third round. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of. I I, I think of the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they should take two receivers in this draft at least. I think he could be someone that may be a target if he's around in the third round or somehow. Uh, But, yeah, Donnie, Antonio Gandy-Golden, we've talked about him on this show before. I think he's one of the big movers as far as uh, teams that will take shots in the second round. Uh, He's a kid that we talked about, another big kid, has magnet hands. I mean, he doesn't drop the football. Um, Actually had one of the best yaks last year in the entire country. His, uh, after the uh, catch uh, numbers, were, were terrific. Um, I also mentioned his strength, just a, a strong kid. I mean, 22 reps is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, one other guy, Donnie, this is a tight end, a guy yeah. you don't really hear much about. Tight end class this year is very bare. Uh, there is not much. There's no Zach Ertz, Donnie, out there on this uh, on this draft. But if there was a weak position in this draft, it would be the tight end. Um, a guy, Adam Troutman, uh, out of Dayton, Donnie. Uh, you yeah. think of Dayton for uh, yeah, basketball, cool. but uh, Adam Troutman, Dayton's actually a, a team that featured a lot of passing. They love to throw the football. He kind of turned into that receiving tight end that you look for. He's a big kid, but 255, big guy, can move. Actually ran a 4840, Donnie. For a kid that big, that's that's quite good. You look at his stat line last year, almost 1,000 yards receiving, had 14 touchdowns, and really has worked on his blocking ability as well. I think he really fits into this new age NFL tight end. He could be the best tight end in this draft and really could move up into the second or third round. I like Adam Troutman out of Dayton. 
No, it's, it's, great. it's a great point you bring up because I was going to flip it over to the tight ends because taking a look at the list, you're right. You see we have those superstar players that you can say, you know what, that guy's going to be a stud, or at least I know that guy. Most people on these lists, Jeff, it's somewhere around like 10, Thaddeus Moss coming out of LSU. He showed out in the national championship game, and fans went, oh, look at this. He's actually ranked 10th on the board currently on ESPN.com. So one of those positions that we've seen it evolve in the NFL, Jeff, you know, the, the evolution of the fullback being taken out of the game. Now the tight end's improving. Tight ends are going to go in this draft. But again, you're right. When you look at this list here, I'm not so sure if you didn't put pictures up and put the names, the average person in the public who actually likes college football would get any more than one or two of these guys. Yeah, no. I, I, and again, like I said, I think the tight end is probably if, if you know, you're looking at current positions that are featured in an offense, it's probably the weakest group in this draft by far. But yeah, I mean, again, this is what, you know, scouts and Talenting, uh, you know, people are, are paid to do find the guys that have uh, you know turned heads. And you mentioned kind of, uh, you know, a guy like Thaddeus Moss. I mean, Troutman is a guy that you know really came on late. I mean, he had a good uh, Senior Bowl. Uh, he really kind of showed himself as a blocker. Which, again, even though teams have moved into this kind of set where you, you're catching the football out, you still have to be able to chip and block. Uh, and, and Troutman has the body where he can, he can go do that. And we take a look at the defensive side of the football. Obviously, we know the stalwarts there from the defensive end, you know, Chase Young, Chase on Epinesa. Those guys are going to come off the board early. But let's talk about some of those defensive ends, Jeff, where you might be looking at third, fourth, or fifth round that can come in. Because, look, getting to the quarterback is paramount in the NFL. Some of these guys can do it. And you might get a steal late in the draft here with those guys. Yeah, you know, I'm not even necessarily, you know, defensive end, I'm not even necessarily talking about here. I I'm looking at a guy, Donnie, that I think can play – I mean, he really goes back to the old level of what a linebacker was. You know, that bruising kid that would just gobble you up. You know, mm -hmm. you want a linebacker that can tackle. He's not afraid to get to the quarterback. He can move around a lot. There's a kid I like at a Cal, Donnie. Evan Weaver uh, actually led the country last year in tackles. Really an instinctive bulldog type of mentality. Um, kind of reminds you of that Nick Witkowski kind of player that can really just – move around. He's instinctively patient. And from what I understand, Donnie, the kid is very well liked. He fits locker rooms well. Obviously, in this day and age, we hear all about the kids that don't follow the rules or maybe they have a bad drug test. You look at a team like the Eagles, Donnie. Culture was how they won a Super Bowl. You and I both know that. When you bring a kid in, you want him to obviously feel good in the locker room. He fits the culture. Evan Weaver is a guy that I really like, and I think he plays a hell of a linebacker position. He's not going to turn heads, Donnie. He's not a physically good-looking kid. He's, he doesn't have all these muscles and things like that, but he is a strong-minded kid, good football IQ. I think he's going to turn into one of these players that probably starts on the um, you know the special teams, works his way into a linebacker spot, and, and becomes a pretty solid player in the NFL. There's a lot of good players here in the secondary, and we see it time and time again. Some of those gems don't get uncovered in the first or second round. They're more later round picks because a lot of talent flows there. Obviously, with Akuda, Henderson, and Diggs, those topping guys. Talk about maybe a safety or a corner or two that you like that you might be able to get late in the draft and can really have an impact on your football team. Yeah, K Kayvon Wallace out of Clemson. You know, obviously guys like AJ Terrell will get the big news in that defense. But, you know, Kayvon Wallace might have been their best player in the secondary. He was a kid that, you know, Donnie, when you have a safety, mm -hmm. obviously the ability to tackle hitch at the, in the second level is important. But obviously the ability to still cover and read zone and, and understand, you know, over the top and things like that. Um, he had a great season last year. Ten pass breakups, which led that team. Um, his ability to also come out of the you know safety position and blitz as well. I mean, Donnie, is there anything better than a good safety blitz? You know, where you're able to choreograph it correctly, it works out. Kayvon Wallace is a guy out of Clemson that I really like. And and Donnie, I mean, how good have Clemson players been on defense in the NFL? A lot of yeah. good players, really, on the defensive line, but. We haven't necessarily seen them translate a ton to the secondary. He could be one of the guys that is able to do it. Uh, keep the eye out for K. Von Wallace. Does a lot of good things as a safety. Yeah, all the way down the list. Now, let's just because obviously we go over a couple different positions here. Give me the one guy because there's always guys like we root for, we have uncovered. What's the one guy, Jeff, an uncovered gem in the draft? You're like, you know what? I want to see this guy drafted and I'm rooting for him because I think he could be a really good football player. Give me that one uncovered draft that maybe the public doesn't have their eye on, but they should. Yeah, this is a guy you know, Donnie, well, um, you know, being a fan of Miami, uh, Jeff Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would really like to see him get drafted. You know, he's had some things off the field that I think Memphis have derailed yeah. him a little bit. I, I don't 
and, and I mean this, you know, very, very willingly. I think he could be a top two, second, third round pick if he were to have non-character issues. He is a kid that I think in the new age NFL where you have these Tyreek Hill type of players, he's a guy that can create these big plays through you know crossing routes and jet sweeps. He's kind of a project player at this point. I don't know if he's going to come in and be a player that's going to help like the Jets or someone like that, but on a good football team that maybe is one player away, you know, maybe a return specialist, something like that. I, I don't think he can become a big play receiver or anything, but could he become a, a, a Tyree Kill esque type of guy? Maybe. I think he could do some things in the return game. I think if he's coached correctly, uh, I think he could be a really fun player. And, and Donnie, again, sometimes a, a young person deserves uh, another shot. I think Jeff Thomas is kind of, kind of that guy, and, and I would like to see him drafted. One other one, we've talked about him on this program before. I don't think he'll get drafted. Uh, Nathan Rourke uh, out of Ohio. Um, you know, I think he could be an interesting guy, especially with the new Taysom Hill type of guys you see. Um, you know, there's such there's such small areas for him in the NFL, like what he can really do, but you know, we've seen Donnie quarterbacks become, you know, decent receivers or decent slot guys. You remember like Antoine Randall years ago. Uh, I'm not saying that Nate works Antoine I mean, Randall yeah. or anything, but you know, that, that role, I don't know how many teams feature a role like his, but you know, there's certain guys you want to root for a Canadian kid. Um, you hope he does some good things. So I'd go Jeff Thomas and Nathan Rook for that. Yeah, it's interesting you bring because the Mac does a lot of those things. I remember Lynch had a cup of coffee. The quarterback from uh, NIU had a cup of coffee with the Chicago Bears. Also, Josh Cribbs back in the day. And also, one of the best blueprints right for Nathan O'Rourke is who, Jeff? Julian Edelman, right out of the Mac, Kent State. So yep. it does translate directly into the NFL. And it'll be a lot of fun to watch. But we're only two days out. We're going to have some fun things here tomorrow. Again, we're going to focus on another aspect of the NFL draft. Looking forward to it, Jeff. I know you have a lot of blogs out with pubsportsradio.com firing for the draft. Tell the people about that before we get out of here. Yeah, I just put out a final mock, round one. I, I think it's very good. I think it's very on point. Can't figure trades. But, Donnie, I got to tell you, tomorrow maybe we should get to maybe a trade or two that we could see. I, I think I'm starting to hear and feel like certain things are going to go down on draft night. It'll be interesting. No, we're going to have a lot of fun right here at PubSportsRadio.com. Hot topic of the day today, those hidden gems tomorrow. We'll have a lot of fun on as well. He's Jeff Nadeau. I'm Donnie Seymour for PubSportsRadio.com. Tune in tomorrow for the latest round of your hot topics.